All right, you got some breaking news out of the NFL. Giants running back Saquon Barkley will miss Thursday's game against the 49ers with a sprained ankle. That's coming from our lead NFL insider, Jonathan Jones. Barkley was injured in the Giants comeback win against the Cardinals on Sunday, considered week to week. ESPN is reporting the Pro Bowl running back could miss up to three weeks as we take a look at the schedule again. Short week in Santa Clara against the 49ers and potentially against the Seahawks in Monday Night Football and then in South Florida for the Dolphins. Giants currently have four running backs on their active roster besides Barkley. That group is headlined by Matt Breida, who is expected to start in his place. All right, let's get the fantasy angle with Dave Richard from Fantasy Football Today. So, Dave, with this news, and I think you were already starting to think about it given what we saw from Saquon on Sunday. What are the options here, Matt Breida? What are the strategy options in terms of the waiver wire off the bat? I would try and stay away from any Giants running back. Now, there are a lot of situations where fantasy managers won't have that option, and Matt Breida will be the best guy that they can go and pick up off the waiver wire. But he's been around the NFL a long time. Coaches trust him because he's a veteran presence, and he's got some speed. But when he had an opportunity last year, it was a garbage game for the Giants in Week 18, 11 PPR points and seven catches. You can do the math on just exactly how many yards he had and how effective he was in that game. I can't say for sure that Matt Breida is going to be the quote-unquote feature back for the Giants as long as Saquon's out. They've got some interesting names behind them. They've got Gary Brightwell, and they've got rookie Eric Gray. And those guys are probably going to help Breida. You're looking at a three-headed monster, potentially, with this backfield. It's all the bells and whistles that say avoid for fantasy football. I don't think there's a solution on the Giants roster that you turn to if you lost Saquon Barkley. And, of course, there's not. There's only one Saquon Barkley. Unfortunately, your, your first-round pick's going to be out for a while. Your fantasy team's going to sting. For yeah, you and I have dubbed him the Avenger when he came out of college in Penn State because he can do it all. He can do everything well, and you don't just plug and play right off the bat, as, as you talked about with Matt Breida. Uh, we also have some other options, though. If people are looking to the waiver wire, and, and maybe they have Saquon, and Breida's not available, other well, ones that have here on this list, and we talked about Breida here, what stands out to you? Well, the good news is that Breida will be available. He's available in 94% <laughs> of CBS leagues, and that's because when people drafted Saquon Barkley, they didn't want to even think about having Matt Breida as a backup. So they didn't even bother rostering him. Maybe in the deepest of leagues, you see him in there at 6%. Oh, by the way, they take on the 49ers on a short week. This is a hard pass on all the Giants running backs. Zach Moss looks like he's got the lead job for Indianapolis. Basically played every single snap for them in week two. He'll be there weeks three and four for the Colts, so I would make a beeline toward him. And Justice Hill continues to get high-value touches in Baltimore, even with Gus Edwards on the field. Gus had a touchdown. It was a short yardage touchdown. Every other snap the Ravens had near the goal line went to Justice Hill. So eventually, the numbers that we saw from him in week one will come back. He's somebody that I would also rather have than Matt Breida. You're right. He's going to be available. Matt Breida, we're talking about 94%. But there are some leagues out there that they're doing waiver wires, and people have already jump to get Matt Breida. There's one more thing. Go ahead. The impact on the passing game in New York and Daniel Jones. Jones has not played yet without Saquon Barkley while being coached by Brian Dable. Mm. That's an interesting conundrum. In 2021, there were a slew of games that Jones played without Barkley. He was hurt. And Brian Dable wasn't the coach of the Giants yet. Jones was awful. I think Jones is actually going to be okay. We're going to see him run a little more. We're going to see him throw a little bit more. And we saw those Giants receivers start to come alive in week two against Arizona. They're going to need those guys to break out again. Jalen Hyatt's an interesting name to look at off the waiver wire wide receiver. If you're a little bit desperate, so is Isaiah Hodgins. That's another receiver yep. in New York. Kind of gives them a different flavor in their receiving core. Those two guys, not priority wide receivers, but guys that could help you out. Maybe use them as a flex. You bump up a running back into the spot that you would have with Saquon, and you've got a wide receiver to help. You out. Yep, you bring up a good point. Typically, that San Francisco defense is elite, but against the Rams, there were some points to be had by some of the pass catchers from the Rams. Speaking of pass catchers, Deontay Johnson, we talked about him dealing with the, the injury that was potentially going to be an IR thing. Now we know it is going to be that way. And again, I, I lean because everyone's going to say if you have George Pickens, you should be happy, but <laughs> that might not be the case again, Dave. You know, I don't mind saying that because I think George Pickens is a great talent. We just need to see it. This is his big opportunity. In week one, when Deontay Johnson got hurt, the target share 
for George Pickens actually plummeted. 11.5% of the targets went to him after Deontay Johnson on the field. When Deontay Johnson was on the field, that target share was over 15%. Mm. So that was very, very surprising. You're going to see a mishmash of wide receivers come through from Pittsburgh without Deontay Johnson there. You see him on the screen with Pickens. Allen Robinson's there. Calvin Austin's there. Don't forget about Pat Fryermuth. Don't forget about the running backs. Jalen Warren out of the backfield. A good pass catch with speed. Najee Harris can catch the football as well. The Steelers will make amends without Deontay Johnson. Four games without him. I think we'll see their offense be maybe a little less explosive, but certainly something that fantasy managers shouldn't be too upset about when it comes to Kenny Pickett, not that anybody's starting Kenny Pickett. Really, this is the opportunity that Pickens has been waiting for since coming to the NFL. If he plays well against Cleveland on Monday night, you're looking at a number three receiver for at least the next three games. And because it's Monday night, little extra set of eyeballs, either confirmation bias or maybe learning something new in terms of the waiver wire market. And speaking of that, uh, what other potential candidates are, are out there right now this week for you? Well, I wouldn't look to the Steelers for a wide receiver because Allen Robinson, you might have a gag reflex if you think about <laughs> how he's been the last couple of years. Look, Some Tutu Atwell, well, we, we've talked a lot about Puka Nakua yeah. and how he's just been this amazing receiver for L.A. Do not overlook what Tutu Atwell has done, and he's got more speed than Nakua. Matchup against Cincinnati on deck. That's a guy who might be able to get you around 15 PPR points if things break right. We saw Tank Dell get over 15 PPR points in week number two. He stepped up in place of, uh, of Noah Brown not being there in Houston. Of course, Nico Collins, the number one wide receiver there. Tank Dell, the number two. Jaden Reed had two touchdowns a week after Romeo Dobbs had two touchdowns for Green Bay. Someone's going to get two touchdowns in that <laughs> offense every week. And then you saw the name at the bottom of the list, Josh Reynolds. And our podcast host, Adam Azer, has been on this guy since before the season even started because we knew that Jamison Williams wasn't going to play. Josh Reynolds has come through for at least 12 PPR points each of the first two weeks of the season. Two touchdowns in week number two. Absolutely a golden flex to have in your fantasy lineup as the number two receiver for the Detroit Lions, whose offense is A, looked pretty good so far this year, and B, won't have David Montgomery around for the next couple of weeks. He's hurt for a little bit, so they're going to throw a little bit more. Josh Reynolds is someone who I think can help fantasy managers in the short term. So we've been focusing, obviously, from a fantasy perspective on injuries. We do have another one on the defensive side of the ball to pass along. The Cardinals are going to be without Buda Baker for at least four games. The All-Pro safety has been placed on IR with a hamstring injury, going to be eligible the return October 22nd when the Cardinals take on the Seahawks into Seattle. And, and, I, and I joke about IDP and that gets deep into the weeds, but in terms of that, Dave, thank you very much. And we'll be talking about whether the free space of the Cardinals still remains. Fantasy football today. Scan that QR code. The guys will have, of course, the very latest and a breakdown of not one, but two Monday night football games tonight and how to attack that waiver wire for the rest of the week.